All right, we are officially live. All right. So we should be able to share it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Share it to my page. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, here we go. Okay. Officially live. Oh. Right. So we should hey, ma'am. I'm trying to okay. put this down so that I can see the comments too. Hey, Jay. As y'all come in, y'all go ahead and say hello. Hello. And tonight's sweatshirt is made by Millie. Jay is the one that actually made the sweatshirt. And so I was just like, come on, let me wear this tonight. <laughs> so for anybody that wants to know who made the shirt, Jay made it as well. Good evening, Miss Sweet. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Shabrika. Good evening. Tonight is anxiety night. I am um I am excited about this one. Tell you the truth. So, yes. I am excited to get this one because I see a lot of people um, struggling with it and stuff like that. Hey, Rachel, Miss Ray Ray out here at Empowering Social Workers, Empowering Social Work Services, LLC. Come on. She accepting new clients. Boo, I'm going. <laughs> She's going to kill me. All right, let's see. Hey, Lisa. Oh, you better come out here, Miss Wee, with pen and paper ready. I am here for it, okay? You know what? And I'm glad she said that because I almost posted like at six o'clock and was like, okay, we're one hour away. Get your pen, your paper, your notebooks, whatever it is that you need, you need to go and grab it right now. <laughs> but back then and started doing something else. Right. I'm I'm excited. And y'all, by the end, um, I am trying to so for all of my therapists who are on here. I want to um I want to compile all of the the coping skills, the strategies that y'all give. Um send them to me and I want to compile a list and whoever want the list cuz you know we talk about them during these sessions, okay? So like I want to be able to compose like a document so that y'all can use them so that we can give them out to people and things of that nature. So by the end of this, I want to be able to have a long document of coping skills that people can look refer back to and they can actually use so awesome. thank you yes so i'm excited about that i know i talked to rachel about it um and so i was going to get with lisa and get like her coping skills and that way um people can just actually refer back and they can i'll probably do like a google document or something yeah. yes. and um so that way we can people can have it or whatever yeah. so okay so y'all, we will get y'all a coping, a list of strategies that of things y'all can do, natural ways to cope with your um natural ways to. I, I want to stop saying cope and coping skills because I know that people don't may not. That's our lingo. That's our lingo as social workers and as therapists, coping skills. And so I need to figure out a different what is coping skills, strategies, techniques. Yes, that's it. Come on, strategies and techniques yeah. to handle your depression in natural ways. Activities, you know, because some of them are activities. Get, you know? Yes, come on, activities and get me together. Y'all better come on here with these 19 people so far, okay? Y'all just running us up this evening. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, y'all. So it is 7.04. Of course, we are going to um, go ahead and get started. We're going to do our deep breathing. So we'll do three deep, breath, deep breaths, and then we will go ahead and get started. I'll keep doing this every session because I want y'all to like repetition is key with everything. And so this is something that is super duper easy. It don't need nobody else. It's just yourself. You can literally do this at your desk. It is so easy and it is actually helpful. So that's why I keep doing deep breathing. We'll do that every night. Okay. So 
Let's go ahead and start. All right. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And this is the last one. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. All right, you guys. So welcome back to another um, episode, because I'm going to call it episode. Welcome back to another episode of Facebook, um, Free Therapy Facebook Tour tonight. Um, but before we get into this, man, I want to make sure I give this disclaimer. This does not substitute a relationship with a real therapist. You must, if you need a therapist, please go and get you a real therapist face to face. Um, even though we are licensed, we are not your own personal therapist because we build Facebook and all the other great stuff. But um, so please, by all means, if you need a therapist, please get you one. Um, I'm gonna compile and on that list that I compile, I'm gonna also make sure I put like where y'all can go and find a therapist too, as well. Um, so yeah. But again, we are not your therapist. It does this does not substitute a relationship with a real therapist. You need to get you one. So um, that's our disclaimer. So welcome again. Um, for those of you that do not know who I am, I am Danielle Bailey. I am the owner of Freedom Therapy Center here in Louisiana, the great state of Louisiana. And I just wanted to come on here and write, bring some friends along with me to talk about mental health for mental health awareness. Month. Mental health is super duper important. So tonight we have Miss Donna L. Cole of Monroe, Louisiana. She has spent the last 20 years of her life dedicated to the advocacy of children in their family. She believes that the capacity that a child learns Oh, hold on. She believes that the capacity that a child learns is all dependent upon the child's mental well-being. I agree with that too. Through life experiences, Donna has gained immense knowledge and wisdom, which allow her to demonstrate understanding and compassion towards other. We need to put that in the social work Bible. Despite losses in love and life, Donna continues to walk with her head held high and her um, heels even higher. Come on, sis. I love it. She is the owner and operator of Wholehearted LLC, where she serves in mentor motivational speak well hold on where she serves and mentor she's a motivational speaker in a grief counseling specialist yo i know some people that need you um donna, donna believes in walking in her true and purpose daily never allowing herself or anyone else to belittle her potential owning and correcting her mistakes living intentionally and wholeheartedly come on i love this bio y'all but come on i love it okay Yes, 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 yes. So, y'all, please give a round of applause for Miss Donna coming all the way from the great city of Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Danielle, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I have to first uh, pause and give a shout out to uh, LK Carey, Lakeisha Carey, for the connection. Um, oh remember exactly what it was that you posted some time ago but you posted it and like she immediately tagged me and I immediately responded and you know we just immediately linked up and I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have met you and met all of my other uh, fellow black female <laughs> social workers and I'm just so excited to be a part of the movement I'm yes so a part of the revolution Come on. to be a part of the evolution of yes. black woman um because i know you know that the bible teaches us that you know the man is the head of the household however without his proper helpmate there is no household mm -hmm. because the woman the mother the female is the glue that holds that household together. We are the glue that holds any 
conglomerate organization, anything that we have, whether it's two people or 200,000 people, women are the force that hold any of those things together. So again, thank you for having me. And I am so, so, so excited for you and everything that God has in store for you. Oh, thank you so much. I am here for it. Yes, ma'am. So like, I'm, thank you. I appreciate those words of encouragement. <laughs> so y'all tonight, anxiety, everybody is like, well, what is anxiety? You know, is, is it real? You know, is it a mental illness? Is it, does it like, what does it mean? So anxiety in a nutshell is anything, anything that totally disrupts your normal way of living. That's just the simplest way that I can put it. Anxiety is anything that totally, now keyword is totally. So for those of you who are taking notes, you need to uh, capitalize it, bold it, italicize it, underline it, whatever, because that is the key word when you're dealing with anxiety. It totally disrupts your normal day-to-day -day activities. So with that being said, there are different types of anxiety. Um, I'm sure about a year ago, all of us experienced some form of anxiety when the world literally shut down due to COVID. People who had not ever experienced anxiety a day before in their life experienced some form of anxiety uh, once March of 2020 got here. Once the president came on and said, you know, hey, like we're shutting down, everything is shutting down, you will be stuck in your homes, you will be stuck, you know, wherever you are for the next, you know, six to eight weeks. I'm sure you probably felt something. Some people probably got hot. Some people probably got cold. Some people, palms probably started to sweat, you know, in here, in the creases of your arms, legs, your feet, your toes, or whatever, you know, started to sweat. Those are all physical forms of anxiety. Some people get headaches. Some people get stomach aches. Some people just get like that, and eh, you know, like, it's like, well, what's wrong with you? And you can't even explain what it is. That's anxiety, y'all. And a lot of times, especially in our culture, mm -hmm. we really understand what anxiety is. And to be honest, we don't understand what a lot of these things are because, you know, grandmama and big mom and Medea and all them, first thing some star heard, oh, baby, just go in there and lay down. You just need to lay down. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to cancel that. We're going to cancel that. Now, it's nothing wrong with taking a nap. Actually getting proper rest is a part of, you know, keeping your anxiety level down. However, y'all, it's 2021. And like Danielle said, everybody needs a therapist of some sort. That does not mean that you're crazy. That does not mean that something is wrong with you. That does not mean that everything that you have done up until this point in life is wrong. That's not true, y'all. Everybody needs somebody. And sometimes mama, daddy, auntie, uncle, best friend, they just not going to get it. Sometimes you have to go, as my friend says, lay on that couch. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to go and sit in somebody's chair. Sometimes you have to spend that shoe money or that purse money or that going out to eat money on a real therapeutic session so that you can just eliminate some of that stuff from your own mind and from your own body. So again, different types of anxiety. We have general anxiety. We have uh, specific anxieties where you may just have like test anxiety. When you hear somebody talking about, oh, well, you know, we got to get prepared for this test in two weeks. Again, your body just immediately starts to do something. And if that happens every time that you hear somebody talking about preparing for a test, you may have what's called test anxiety. That's a specific type of anxiety, meaning that outside of that, you're fine. You can just go about your normal day-to-day -day routine and you're not interrupted at all. So we have panic disorders. Again, certain things trigger your body. Certain things tr uh, trigger your mind. And it's just like that. Instantly, you begin to panic. You know, for me, I'm afraid of heights. So, like, if I'm walking up to something and they be like, well, you got to go, you know, to the 10th floor. And especially in those glass elevators, y'all. The first <laughs> I don't want those things, that, baby, I'm telling you, I was holding on for dear life. Probably had my eyes 
my eyes closed because like i knew that i was going into panic mode i remember uh one time i called myself going snorkeling that didn't work because once they went to put that thing on my head and my head is already big but once they went to put that thing on my head and i couldn't breathe that was a wrap nope you can cancel this uh this snorkeling uh excursion because uh <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. So again, y'all, it's certain things that trigger your anxiety. It's certain things that trigger, you know, you and you go into panic mode. Sometimes, um, like when people see somebody who was hurt, you know, they start to panic. Uh, I remember one time my baby son, uh, he broke his wrist uh, at school on the playground. And y'all, I had never experienced anything like that before in my life. So I'm going into the school and I see my baby sitting there just crying and sobbing and his poor little arm, you know, looking like the scarecrow. And the principal was like, Miss Cole, you got to get it together. Like you cannot, you know, come in here because if your baby sees you like that, then he's going to. So again, you know, in certain situations, we panic. As a mother, I went from zero to a thousand, not thinking about anything because that's my baby, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. That is a problem, y'all. For these people who, you know, you, you get your brush and you have to brush your hair. 10 times on this side. Then you come over here, you got to do 10 times on this side. Everything has to be lined up, you know, one inch apart or whatever it is. You know, all the white clothes got to be over here, all the black clothes over here, all the flat shoes over here, all the tall boots over here. Y'all, that's a problem. That's mm -hmm. not being a neat freak. That is excessive. <laughs> <laughs> so again, Anything that is excessive, anything that is intense, anything that is heightened, anything that is outside of the quote unquote normal, that could be a sign of anxiety. And again, I'm saying could be because as Danielle stated, we're not here to diagnose anybody. We don't want y'all getting off this live saying, well, Donna said this, this, and this, so I know I got anxiety. Or Danielle said this. Mm -hmm. No, do us like that, y'all. Don't do us. <laughs> But we're just here to make you aware of certain things that you probably have seen or that you probably have experienced and you just kind of brushed it off like, oh, you know, I'm just tired. or Oh, you know, it's just been a long day. No, if you notice a pattern in these certain behaviors or if you notice a pattern in your certain reactions and responses to things, it could be that you may be experiencing a form of anxiety or something else. It could just be extreme fatigue. Only you know that because only you know what your day-to-day -day schedule looks like. Post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of times we think of post-traumatic stress disorder and we automatically connect it to veterans. Y'all, I'm here to tell you again, COVID. COVID has um, affected everybody all over the world, but there are some people who have had more of an impact from COVID than others. COVID did not directly affect me in my household or my immediate family. Thank God for that. However, I do know people who have lost limbs due to COVID. That's, that's post-traumatic stress, y'all. A year later, this person looks down and the leg or the ligament or whatever that had been there for how many years of their life is now gone. That's post-traumatic stress, y'all. You know, so don't don't get stuck in, in that old timey thinking that PTSD is only related to people who fought in the war or it's only related to people who have served our country because that's wrong, y'all. And that is one of the biggest myths, in my opinion, uh, in the black culture. And we, we got to get away from that. Right. Uh, now, post-traumatic stress from having left your job of 30 years and now all of a sudden you got to start over. So you've left your job, you've left your city, your state, you know, or whatever. It, again, it's anything that disrupts your normal day-to-day -day being. And I would say even add that um, folks in the hood suffer from PTSD too. Like Absolutely. The, all this killing that we've been having lately, that's not normal. But hearing gunshots and all of that, that's not normal. P that is PTSD. Y'all, like, yo, folks from the hood, I'm pretty sure, like, y'all could have a real live diagnosis of PTSD. So, 
Absolutely. And and the thing of it, just think about rappers, you know, like Tupac and Biggie. Yeah. If we think back now because we're older. If we really think back or we sit down and listen to the actual lyrics of those songs, mm -hmm. that's PTSD. Yep. You growing up around drugs every day, you walking outside, like you say, and dead bodies, you know, just laying there, or you actually see somebody just shooting somebody and they just go on about their business. Like they just waved and said, hey, yeah, mm -hmm. that's PTSD, y'all. Listen to the lyric of what these rappers were saying. Listen to the words of what these people were talking about. This was the life that they lived. Mm-hmm. And it was nothing, you know, but their their talent and God and, you know, whomever gave them that opportunity to be able to get out of that environment. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely correct about that. So what are some coping skills or strategies or techniques or activities that we can engage ourselves in when we do feel like we're beginning to panic or when we do feel like, you know, maybe things are kind of a little imbalanced? Um, so first thing, take a time out. My, my uh, new slogan is unplug so you can recharge. Unplug so that you can recharge. Mm -hmm. Turn off the TV. Turn off the cell phone. Turn off the iPad, the computer, the tablet, whatever other electronic devices that you have. Close the door. Put your do not disturb sign out there and take a time out. Especially my women, especially my mothers, especially my wives, you know, take a time out. You have got to learn how to take time for yourself. If you don't, you will end up having anxiety. And truth be told, you'll probably end up having a nervous breakdown. Right. And I'm just being honest. And there's nothing funny about that. I'm not making light of that. I'm just being honest because we can go, 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 go so much thinking that we're the Duracell battery and we're not, and your body will literally shut down on you. And then once your body forces you to take mm -hmm. that break, that's when you sit there and you be like, dang, that's why I've been having all these headaches. That's why those headaches turned into migraines. That's right. why it's turned into stomach aches. That's why those stomach aches, you know, turned into back aches. That's why those back aches turned into me not hardly even being able to get out the bed. That's what... Yes, that's why my skin changed colors. That's why my nail beds changed colors. That's why, you know, underneath my eyes, our body will give us several signs. Our body will give us several indications that something is wrong. Not saying that it's anxiety, but that something is wrong and that we need to get checked out. So the number one thing is to take a time out, take a break. We always say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, you make time for everything else. You make time for everyone else. So make time for yourself. That's not being selfish. That's taking time to care for you so that you can continue to care for everybody else. Second thing, eat a well-balanced meal. Now, don't y'all come on here talking about, I'm going to have a Big Mac in this hand and a Diet Coke in this hand. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> Got a chocolate chip cookie over here and a chocolate chip cookie over here. No, that's not balanced. I'm talking about eat your meats, your fruits, your vegetables, and drink plenty of water. Plenty mm -hmm. of water. If you can't stay in the water by itself, you know, they have several different kind of little, um, you know, packets of things that you can put in the water and mix it up and make it taste better. But y'all, seriously, eat a balanced meal. I'm not saying you got to eat, you know, three meals a day and, and three snacks. I'm not saying that. I'm not a nutritionist. But what I am saying is get your body on a normal routine. You know, if you know that you eat breakfast, even if it's just a piece of toast with some peanut butter spread on it, you got your toast and you got protein in your peanut butter. Flush it down with some water or some all natural juice or some milk, you know. That's all I'm saying. Try to, you know, increase your fruit intake and try to increase your green vegetable intake. Those little simple things that helps you to maintain that balanced diet. So the next thing is getting proper rest. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, where you just so tired to time you sit down and sleep. That's not proper rest. That's a true indication that you do not get proper rest. Right. 
in your 20s and 30s and maybe even 40s and time you sit down <laughs> something is seriously wrong with that no you are not just that tired no you are not just that exhausted you are probably on your way to your your levels if you were to get checked by a physician your levels would be all over the place because that means that your body has not had time to recharge though the the natural chemicals that our body produces and lets off all of them are, are off kilter and that's why as soon as you sit down you knocked out and then when you wake up 20 minutes later you feel like you slept for eight hours and you look at the clock and you're like dang i ain't been asleep for 20 minutes right but y'all that's not good even as adults we should have at least at least six to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep now i know some of us have to get up and go to the ladies room at night that's okay but you still should have six to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep even as adults next thing exercise danielle has challenged us you know to do a, a walk uh every day for this month a walk y'all it don't have to be no long, you know, we ain't trying to run no 5K, but, you know, 20, 30 minute walk. I promise you, you will feel so much better with just a simple walk. Incorporate that into your weekly routine. I'm not going to even say daily. Just mm -hmm. do it a couple of times a week. That and getting some sleep and drinking some water, you will automatically feel better if you start doing these things early on. Take deep breaths. Danielle had us to take three deep breaths before we started tonight. That just clears it for those of you who did it. And if you did it properly in through the nose, out through the mouth, after that third breath, you should have felt a sense of relief. You should have mm -hmm. felt a sense of calmness. You should have felt a sense of focus. Again, if you did it the right way, not just, <sighs> no, we ain't nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now we, when I, you know what we are giving birth we're trying to give birth to a new us yes that's not how to do it slowly in through the nose slowly out through the mouth that's the proper way to do your deep breathing exercises count to 10 and heck if counting to 10 don't do it take it up to 15 take it up to 20 depending on the situation that you're in sometimes you may have to go a little higher and it's not just one two three four five no it's like one two three four kind of get you know a little rhythm with it kind of get a little pattern with it we're not we're not you know running no race here it's not like one two three four five six no we're, we're not learning how to tap dance mm -hmm. you, Put a little slow rhythm to it. Slow counts to 10. You can go one to 10. You can do 10 to one, whatever, you know, fits you. And lastly, do your best. Do your best. And that's it. That's it. We are not perfectionists. We are not robots. We are human beings. We are going to make mistakes. Things are going to happen. You can have an agenda, everything, one, two, three bullet points highlighted, italicized, whatever. Something could happen and knock that agenda completely out the window. That's life, y'all. Mm -hmm. End of life. You jump over that hurdle. You make whatever adjustments that you have to make, but you keep going. You keep going. Don't beat yourself up about it. If you made a mistake, go back and correct it learn from it and do better the next time that's it that's it and let me just say this to my parents a lot of times we put so much pressure on our children and we don't even realize it we don't even realize it we can cause our children to experience anxiety and we don't even realize it because our children especially those who have children who adore them and, and respect them and honor them, they don't want to disappoint their parents. So they feel like if they don't make the good grades or if they do mess up or if they do get in trouble, that's a devastation to them, y'all. And so they spend, you know, the rest of that day or that week or that month or maybe even the rest of their lives replaying those moments in their head. And they always feel like I'm not good enough because mama didn't want me to be perfect. 
but I'm not perfect. No, we don't want you to be perfect. We do want you to do your best. And when you do make a mistake, own it and correct it. But y'all, we, we've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop putting uh, so much pressure on our children. Teach them. When you see them going wrong, teach them. Now, I'm not saying that we're perfect. Sometimes we might yell. Sometimes we might fuss. Sometimes we might even cuss. Yeah. Know? But hey, it is what it is. But when it's all over and when you have calmed down, you go back to your child and you sit that child down and you talk to them and explain to them, you know, why you're correcting them or why you feel the way that, that you feel and allow your child to tell you why they feel the way that they feel. Because you're doing two things at that moment. Number one, you're teaching your child how to properly communicate feelings. And that's important because the older they get, that's why people end up in divorce. That's why people end up in jail. And that's why people end up dead because they don't know how to properly communicate. They want to fight. They want to shoot up everything and everybody because nobody taught them mm -hmm. or, they, you know, patted them on the shoulder. Oh, that's all right. You know, you'll be fine. No, teach them, teach them. Every moment is a teachable moment, no matter how bad it is. And even the good moments are teachable because we can always improve. And lastly, sometimes we do need medication. Again, you know, depending on how you grew up and, and how you were taught, you know, grandma could have been like, no, nah, baby, just go lay down. We're going to pray over. It. You know, I'm, I'm going to go get a little oil put on. You know, you're going to be fine. But then you have other people. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take my baby down there because, you know, I'm going to get that check. Yeah. <laughs> really? Poor child probably don't even need no medication. Probably all they need is a butt whipping and, and some <laughs> discipline and some talking to. But once you find out that you can get a little change, mm -hmm. on, you know, you can put them on Adderall or you can put them on Clonopin or you can put them on, you know, Xanax or, you know, or whatever. And I'm not making fun of people, you know, who have to take medication because depending on what your diagnosis is and depending on your symptoms, sometimes you may need medication. But for children, let that be the last resort. I mean, like you have seriously done everything. You have done the CBT. You have done the DBT. You have done everything that you possibly can. And then you know, let's try the medication because you don't want your child walking around like a zombie. They're not functioning. No, yeah. they calling you saying, Miss Donna, you got to come get them again. No, they're not doing that. But at the same time, they're not able to function either, y'all. So again, we have to find that proper balance. That proper balance is what's important. So lastly, um, you know, for my African-American people, we have got to learn how to normalize talking about those things that we don't want. Because nine times out of 10, if you don't want to talk about it, you probably should be talking about it. Ask questions about their cousin who they always kept in the room. They let them come out to speak. They let them come out to eat. But then they had to go back to the room. Why? Hmm. Why? Why did so-and-so, you know, they had to go move up here and live, you know, out of town? Why? What you mean that they don't know how to act? Because, you know, that's what we say. You know, they don't know how to act, so you know, they got to stay over there in the room. But what does that mean? Because everybody's teachable. Everybody's trainable. You could train a dog. Right. So if you could train a dog, you can teach another human being even if that person does have a developmental delay they can still be taught something they can still learn something so again anxiety anxiety is something that disrupts your total way of being your total day-to-day -day routine like you just you just can't even get it together because this thought has impeded your brain and it has literally stopped you from doing your normal activities. If you experience that on a continual basis or if you experience that in certain situations like being afraid of heights or other phobias like snakes or rats or the dark, you know, those are all real phobias. Those are all 
real, you know, feelings that people feel. You know, growing up, you hear people talk about, you know, go get the paper bag, let them breathe in a bag. You're like, y'all, that's serious. Right. Serious. Because if a person can't control their breathing, they could die. So anxiety is a real thing, even though, you know, we may not be able to see it because a lot of times, again, in our culture, good ain't nothing wrong with you. Go up there and sit down. Quit acting silly. They're not acting. They're not playing. So that's why it's so important for us to be aware of the signs and symptoms, because a lot of times your body may tell you things. But if you really know your child or your friend or your family member, you can look at them and tell that something is wrong. You know, their pupils may look a certain kind of way. They may, you know, start sweating profusely or again, you know, hand sweaty, anything like that. Those are things that we really need to pay attention to. That's all I have. <laughs> well, all right, Miss Donna, thank you so much. I want to make sure that I read some of these comments. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat right now. Um, I want to make sure I put some of these comments on the screen. Um, experience of childhood trauma, such as exposure to gunshot victims, drug raids, sexual sexual abuse, etc. That is that um that's Miss Angela and she was that was when we were talking about PTSD. So she gave us a little bit more um information. Absolutely. On okay, let me see what Rachel says. So um let's see. Think also how artists normalize their trauma. Yeah. Well, Kevin Gates is a real big person when I really like I think he was the one that woke me up to really listening to their lyrics and really and truly listening to um what they're saying and stuff like that and so like i know one thing that i do with kids is and this is a parent to go a little tidbit if you want to understand what your child is going through ask them their favorite song and right. get them to play it and right. so you listen to the lyrics to see what they what the lyrics are saying and so like i had i did that with one of my clients and it was a song by kevin gates and Kevin Gates was talking about suicide. So that immediately prompted me to go into, so that's how you feel it. And they was just like, yeah, this is my favorite song. I play it every day, blah, blah, this. So parents, if you want to understand what your child is not saying, but yeah. they need help it, get yeah. them to play you their favorite song. And yeah. you will learn a lot about what they are thinking and what they're feeling. Absolutely. Let's see what Rachel say. Love it. Unplug and recharge. Cool. I can't wait to Thursday. I'm unplugging and I'm recharging. Recharging. Okay. T-shirt time. Time out. I like it. <laughs> Come on, Lisa. Come on. <laughs> Let's see what so we got. Right. That's true. Make time. Um, I think this is your friend right here. When she said, "No, ma'am, not at 40. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Well, Rachel said it's the visuals for me. <laughs> let's see what's, what else. Let me go back up. I think there was some more that I'm, I'm missing. Uh oh, girl. No, I want to check private. Okay. Let's see what else we got. I know that there was. Good evening. Yes, new birth um to us. Let's see. I like this. Give yourself grace. That is yeah. so so important to give yourself yeah. grace. Um, Julie, talk about it. And here go your friend again. <laughs> True, I learned this from my with my oldest. I like that. Oh, I feel uh oh, feel like some workshops are coming out of these tips. Yo, yes, most definitely. Baby, we can make it happen, okay? Yes. <laughs> Let's yes, see. Absolutely. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, it might save someone's life. Yes. Girl, my God, today. Yes, yes, it will. Knowing family history is so important. It's imperative. It's imperative. I did a genogram on my family in, um, let's just say, like, my God, I was like, what, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Help us today. <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah, I was just like, uh, okay, let me put this away. I did that back in school though. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, we had to do that in class. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
so in, so in also knowing the family history of your spouse too is also important so for any of those of you who are like dating who are um like or dating or whatever you want to get married or you're already married understanding that person's family history is super duper important understand how they communicate with their caregivers also is super important because and watch their caregivers be observant of how their caregivers communicate because that's how your spouse is going to communicate with you too so like understand be observant family history super important especially especially if you want to have children that's a word right there if you know or if you think that you are going to lay down and create a child with this person you need to know that history again mental illness is real mm -hmm. learning disabilities are real these, these, this is where we get into the area of the topics and the conversations that we don't want to have. Now, I'm not saying if y'all on y'all first date, you know, you got 20, 20 checklists. That's not <laughs> what I'm saying. But again, I'm 44. So at 44, you know, my conversation on a date may be different from somebody who's 24. But at the same time, there are certain things, certain topics that you need to be discussing, especially if this is your intended lifetime partner right y'all need to have the hard conversations it, it ain't about you know the looks you know the how much money what they drive and what they wear and uh -uh. it's not about that because someday true just be told gravity is gonna sit in and yep. everything look at that right here it ain't gonna look the same you know you you got to be able to have a conversation with somebody exactly okay. Don't grow old sitting up in the house looking at each other. They can't nobody even say nothing but huh. Yeah. That's not that's not living a quality life, y'all. Seriously, that's that's not what you want. You know, you gotta be able to have a conversation with somebody because that somebody is so much more than what they look like on the outside or you know how they perform in bed. And I'm just being honest. We all grown on here. I'm just being honest. You know, so yes, knowing that family history, yours and your spouse's or your potential spouse's, it's, that's important because you got to talk about, you know, breaking generational curses, breaking, you know what I'm saying, educational curses. You know, you have some people who have never, they didn't even make it to junior high school. Mm -hmm. They didn't graduate high school. They don't even know what going to college is like, even if it's just a trade school or a junior college. They don't know because all they know is the hood. Mm -hmm. All they know is, you know, the projects. And I'm not knocking, you know, anybody who came from that environment or still in that environment. What I'm saying is we have to learn how to teach ourselves that there's something else outside of that fence. But I'm not going to start that because that's a whole nother thing. Like why they got to be fenced in. <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. But y'all feel me. Y'all know what I'm saying. All right. So we have some more comments about great information, great job, great job, great advice. Exactly. I did that with the client. Come on. All right. Let's see. Eye opener. Yes. Let's see. Rachel say, I like that. <laughs> Thanks for the info. Come on, Lisa. Let's see. Great jobs, ladies. Um, yeah, great jobs for the tip. Thanks for the tidbits. Very, let's see. Yes, Lord, very true. What else we got? Our black fam. Here you go. Our black families keep many secrets. That's gonna be the death of us. Men and men. As a whole, that is gonna be the death of us as we don't yes, we don't get out that mind, that cycle. Yes, if you date me, <laughs> I need to know all your family. <laughs> Wait a minute, but she said on oh, all the family. She I'm here. I'm going back three generations, okay? I need to know what your grandma, your great grandma, and, and your grandma, and grandma, okay? I need to know all of them. Three I generations. Okay. All the family. <laughs> <laughs> and uncles. That, that thing has roots. Yeah. Roots, you know. We always looking at what's on the surface. You got to get down deep down up under there. And, and the thing about it, y'all know, roots don't just come right here. Roots spread. Yeah. So you got to think about that. 
Think about when them trees came up last year from them hurricanes and storms. When those trees uprooted, those roots were going out like that, y'all. Mm -hmm. If they were going out like that and they were uprooted, that's still not even the end of it because that means that that tip was attached to something else. That is so true. Come on here with the visuals. I'm here for it. Let's see. Just your friend, I bought that lesson. Yes, <laughs> look way back. My mama say ball sense is the best senses, but I'm gonna learn from you though. <laughs> I'm not finna buy it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, is just family history is so important. Rachel, what did you want her to repeat? Did you want her to repeat something? Oh Let's no. <laughs> Great point. Let's see. Amen. Lord have mercy. I can tell y'all some family and client stories about hidden family medical mental health issues. Ooh. Ooh. That in itself is a lot. Indeed. Okay. So thank y'all so much. If y'all don't have any questions, thank you so much, Miss Donna, for thank coming you. on. And share your wisdom and experience with us. Do you have any final suggestions? I mean, final comments? My my final comment is this. Uh, as Danielle stated in the beginning, you know, take therapy seriously. Um, you know, we have a lot of great therapists who have uh, shared their comments with us. Danielle has a lot of great therapists coming up the remainder of this month. Uh, even if you don't do any of us, you know, find somebody who you feel comfortable with. Let me just say that because in order for your therapeutic relationship to work, it's a two way street. You mm -hmm. have to give in order so that they can give you something. They can't just sit there pouring into you, but you're not giving them anything to feed off of. But that starts with you feeling comfortable because if you're not comfortable, then you're not going to share. Then you're going to go out there and say, I went to see Donna. She ain't even helped me. I just wasted my money. The right person will ask you, well, did you talk to Donna? And then you'd be like, no, I really didn't. Okay, well, you need to go back and try again if you're ready. Don't go to therapy because we're telling you to go or because somebody else is telling you to go. Go because you have acknowledged and accepted that something, you know, just needs a little adjustment and you need to find the right person to help you get aligned. Right. All therapy does for you. You're finding the right person to help you get aligned. And it may take you a couple of times. Even when you do find that right person, you may go and they start asking those hard questions and start bringing up those hard topics. And you'd be like, man, shoot, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want. Here's the thing. There's this thing called um, client, you know, clinician privacy. You got, to, you know, sign off on all of that stuff. So this person is not going to be out here talking your business. That's yeah. a breach of confidentiality. So they're not going to do that. Find somebody who you feel comfortable with. Find somebody who you trust. And find somebody, you know, who has good ratings, who, you know, you've heard other people say good things about. And be careful who you do take advice from. Because, again, the right person will ask you, did you actively participate? The wrong person will just be like, girl, you right. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Shoot, don't, don't keep going over there. Right. Who you need in your life. You need people around you when you're getting ready to begin that therapeutic journey. You need people around you who are going to uplift you and support you. Not somebody who's going to pull you back and be like, you're right, you, you good. No. Once you've made up your mind to take that journey, find you at least one person to take that journey with you. One person that you trust to take that journey with you. And know that that person is, is there for you. Yes, it may be a job to them, but I promise you, y'all, this is not an easy job that we do. So if we're showing up for you, you got to show up for you. That's it. That's it. That's it right there. Um, I tell my clients all the time, I will not outwork you. Okay. And, <laughs> and I will say that to add on to that, what she said, um, do know that you will find the right one. Um, it reminds me of... The Bible, um, one of the Bible verse when um, the Lord says, "My sheep know my voice," and you're gonna know 
that you're right therapist. And I remember my therapist telling me, he was just like, don't worry about the people who are going to be connected to you because your tribe is going to know you. Your tribe is going to know your voice and your tribe is going to honor you. So I just want to say that make sure like, just give it a try. Keep on going and keep trying. So let's see the rest of this week. We have two more. Um, I'll meet you guys again on Tuesday and I'll meet you guys again on Wednesday. So Tuesday we have Miss Tawana, um, Thomas Harris. Um, so she'll be talking about anxiety and we meet how Miss Julia Zeno and we will talk about she will be on Wednesday. And so we'll talk about anxiety again as well. So um, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Miss Donna. Thank you all so much for being here with us on tonight. Um, all of these videos are available on Facebook. They will stay up on Facebook. But if you wanted to go to YouTube, they are on YouTube as well. And they're actually in chronological order um in a little playlist so again when we give y'all the um when we give y'all the what is it the the strategies list if y'all need to take it and find the video so i'll have the strategy list in on uh, the person name or whatever and so if y'all need to go and find that video y'all can watch the video back and see what she was talking about all right you guys so thank y'all so much i'll see y'all on tomorrow you guys thank y'all for being here with us